What is up guys, you get not the worst here, bringing another Black Desert online video, and today we are taking a look at the new Crystal Preset update that was introduced into the game. We've got uh, some mix up with uh, how crystals have been used previously, how you can equip them and that sort of thing. Uh, so we're going to kind of go over how you can do it and just give you some brief examples of setups that you can use for different things and kind of figure out what's going to work best for you and your class. First thing to address, because this just keeps coming up, I see everywhere. If you're just logging into the game and you don't know where your crystals went, it is going to be two places. Anything that was uh, able to be sold on the marketplace, so it's a tradable crystal, was moved into your central marketplace. So check that for those. You'll see plenty of stuff in there from whatever you had. And then if you had a cat tagged character or a or crystals that can't be sold, like um, like Kydex crystals, for instance, are, are non-tradable on the market. Something like those, or um, any of the crystal copies that were tagged on your character, you're actually going to get those. They're treated as non-tradable crystals as well. They're going to be in your Heidel storage, uh, any of the ones that were left over there. So that's where you're going to find all your crystals. Uh, to note, your costume crystals will also be in the Heidel storage as well, as those are considered non-tradable crystals. So if you're looking for those, that's where they are. Don't panic. It's there. Um, now, as far as accessing the new crystals, you can kind of just check what crystals you have in your uh, bag by selecting crystals out of the main menu. What is your bag? Well, this is your new um, crystal bag, I guess, <laughs> for lack of a better term there, um, that you can store up to 50 crystals at a time um, in here. And you can see we have, I've just put like kind of anything that I'd consider using different with four Maclods and four Hooms. Don't ask me why I have four Elkars. You only need two in there. And I'll explain that in a bit. Rebellious Crystals, Corrupt, whatever, whatever, right? So you have different options. You can store up to 50 into this bag. Once you've put a crystal into this bag, it's similar to socketing it in the sense that if you were to remove one of the crystals out of here, um, I put some junk. Yeah, if I were to remove one um, out of here to do it, it will actually um, uh, show you a little bit. Did I select it? Oh, let's make sure we get, there we go. Select. If you actually do it, um, it's going to delete the crystal. See, it'll be removed, crystal will be destroyed. Boom, and it's gone. Uh, now, similarly to before, you can use a crystal extraction tool uh, or a Black Spirit Essence on that item. And if you do that, you'll be able to extract them out of your bag while keeping the crystal exactly the same as you used to when you used to pull it out of your gear. So just be careful when you're setting that up with what you put in there um, and how you use it. Now, as far as selecting what crystals you want to use, you're going to go to your Black Spirit Transfusion like you would have before, but you're going to see the menus a lot different here. You've got up to five different presets that you can choose from to kind of build out your crystal selection. And when you go to look at this, you might see a lock on these two and possibly this one as well. What those are is the additional two slots you get off putting a Garmoth's heart into your awakened weapon. So if you have a Karando's heart, one of these will be locked. If you have a Garmoth's heart, they'll both be unlocked like you see here. Okay. And then this one's going to be your outfit uh, crystal that you could equip the critical hit or movement speed one that is on here. So if you're on a uh, costume setup that doesn't have that uh, slot unlocked you're not going to be able to equip a crystal into that zone so that's going to be just those three okay so outside of that um, the others you can enter uh, regardless of your your current gear setup for it uh, it has no interaction with your gear other than those three spots for it the next thing to note is that the restrictions that used to exist uh, for gear slots as far as it being a glove piece or armor piece aren't necessarily the same as what they used to be. Um, they're actually grouped into different categories. Let me pull up the, uh, the sheet that kind of explains which uh, groups these go into. So here we have a list. This was posted in today's patch notes um, explaining to you uh, what different groups are. And what those groups mean is how many of each type of crystal that you can socket, which kind of tells you the variations you can use. It is actually a bit different than what it was with the gear sets. Um, and I'll explain as we show a couple of examples. So for instance, you can you can socket an unlimited number of Gervish, Makalot, or Hooms, however many you want in there. It doesn't matter. There's no limit to that. Then if we look at maybe you're thinking I can get away with some extra ignore all resistance and you want to run Crystal Velcar and the Precision Crystals and pick up the extra accuracy that way, well, you can't do that. And the reason for that is the group that those items are in is ignore all resistance and you can only socket two ignore all resistance uh, total in your in your crystal preset. So you're not going to be able to put in two of these and two of these. It's going to be two total out of that out of that section. So same to be said for what's considered spirit crystals, red spirit crystals, rebellious spirit crystals, Voltar spirit crystals. These are all in the same category. So you're going to only be able to socket two 
of each of these types. So you got to keep that in mind when you're deciding what to run. Extra damage works the same way. Corrupt crystals are included in extra damage, so you're not going to get away with running these and critical hit uh, both out of them. It's only going to be two in there. Ignore resistances or grouping for it. Um, interesting to know, Olicus and Akrat are actually uh, separated. Um, these were previously crystals that you would put into your um, awakening uh, weapon if you had the Garmoth's heart on there. So um, PVE at least, I actually did socket, socket to uh, Glorious Akrat and to Glorious Olicus, uh, both for the beneficial um, accuracy gain. And then, uh, of course, monster damage, human damage if I happen to be at human damage monster zone. But I'm also getting 4% attack speed instead of just 2 in that setup. Uh, in PvP, you're probably going to be looking at uh, some ignore options, ignore different resistance depending on your class type. Uh, and then, of course, the Glorious Olicus are always insanely good from there. Special attack evasion rate works the same uh, as it did before. You're only going to have two of those. Uh, you can run two resistance types in it and then two evasion types as well. Uh, Karme and Addis are actually notably different. So you actually could run like two L cars and two Addis or something like that if you wanted to. A little extra AP. Um, or pick up your critical hit. Um, you can run Red Fangs and Elkars and Addis or Karme if you wanted to. So that's an option as well. You can also additionally run two Addis and two Karme if you're trying to squeeze some extra AP. Maybe you're at a PvE zone where you don't need the additional accuracy because you're already at 100% hit rate. Um, you've got Viper, Histria, two groups of Red Battlefield. You see Red Battlefield 1 has your uh, Kobe, Power, and Viper. So two of each of those. And then Red Battlefield 2... You can do two of either uh, Karme, Harfia, or Histria. Uh, fall damage and jumps, kind of whatever. Recover on hit, dim magic. We, we get uh, some resistance options, only two out of resistance increase uh, on those. The And then we, we look at just the ones that are like... Um, you know, goofy stuff you're not going to use much or like life scaling ones is, is kind of whatever. So that opens up some different possibilities for what you can run as far as the setup. Um, I just threw together a couple real quick to give you kind of an example of setups to run. This is be like a, a kind of standard PVE setup with two uh, Elkar crystals. I have two Red Fang crystals. The upside to Red Fang, aside from just getting the AP, Addison Carr may do this as well. Aside from just getting the, the plus five AP, we're also getting critical hit bonus. This allows you um, to hit max crit without having to use a spirit perfume if you're one of the classes that finds that you need to. So you'd, you'll be able to do that without actually using that, which is really nice. Um, as I mentioned before, I do have uh, two all Glorious Olicus and two Glorious Aukrads. This is giving me uh, 14 monster damage, uh, 14 human damage, and I'm getting 12 accuracy and 4% attack speed out of it. I strongly recommend you try this out before you just jump all AP and shove it in there um, because attack speed is going to generate much more damage over time than that extra AP. Uh, rebellious Crystals can now be used with Corrupt Crystals, as I mentioned. So PvE-wise, this is a really strong setup to combine those two Rebellious and two Corrupt Crystals. Corrupt Crystals, as we know, bonus AP and a boatload of extra critical hit damage um, does add up to a lot of damage overall. Rebellious Crystals are nice. I've even seen them run prior to this change, although Corrupt was... Uh, overall more damage now you don't have to make that decision uh some bonus hp 175 each so um uh, we've got two of these in all ap plus five and another five monster ap skill xp plus five percent won't be super relevant for most after a while uh two gin vipers as well kind of standard uh, for that and then of course my outfit on is movement speed a couple of things to take from this This is just kind of a generic idea uh, as far as accuracy you you need to make sure you have 100% accuracy hit rate on all of the PVE skills that you're using in a monster zone uh, I oftentimes see people discussing things where like oh I have enough accuracy or like it's good enough I only miss you know a few times on a few different skills or whatever that's not gonna make sense long term the more you're missing you're literally just leaving damage on the table and getting that extra hidden 5 AP off of a red fang crystal is extremely unlikely to outweigh missing on one skill uh, or even multi, uh, just two hits of 10 on one skill and that doesn't make any sense to get five AP it really doesn't and the other thing to keep in mind uh, is paying attention to your AP caps so the hit rate you can calculate on garmoth.com uh, with it make sure that you have 100% hit rate at the zone you're at that'll determine what L cars you need do you need gin vipers you can always cut back uh, keep in mind you can cut back on the L cars first before the vipers right you're getting 20 accuracy off these you're getting 12 off these and you don't need the ignore all resistance for the PVE side of it so feel free to drop these before you drop the vipers the actual the slot that you're putting it in is irrelevant at this point it's just the number of crystals for that type um, so yeah, don't necessarily drop your vipers before L cars, but calculate how much accuracy you need. See what your hit rate is for your grinding. If you're at hex, depending on your class, uh, your class accuracy passives are going to matter. Evasion debuff is going to matter. Your accuracy boost going to matter. How how you have your skill on set up, and then your accuracy modifier on your 
uh, individual skills. All these things matter when calculating that and getting your hit rate. From there, you can shove in a AP however you want to go. I still strongly recommend you go attack speed, cast speed over um, over your uh, just flat AP to get more damage that way. And also, as I mentioned, the AP caps, I'm gonna link to a sheet that Big and Shiny's worked out that has uh, most end game spots and actually just a ton of spots and what their total AP cap uh, number is. So you can factor that. Why do I mention that? Because again, shoving a bunch of AP doesn't make any difference. Let's say you're at hex, I think off the top of my head, it's roughly like 925 AP. And that's the number of your total AP, including bracket, plus your additional monster damage or creature subtype damage added with that. I think it's like roughly, maybe it was 915, something like that, right? like low 900s is the AP cap. And if you go from like 925 to 955, an extra 30 AP um, along with it, you end up dealing an average of like 10 more damage <laughs> on, across the board on it. So uh, surpassing those doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You could probably use something in that slot that's going to be a lot more useful. And especially the lower the spot that you're at, the lower that AP cap is. If you're at, uh, you know, Serendia, Elvia, or something like that, it's going to have an even lower number. I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but it is on that sheet. Um, so shoving more and more AP is actually not going to have uh, any benefit for you. You can put something else like, oh, I don't know, attack speed um, to kind of benefit from that. Uh, PvP setup, uh, this is uh, just kind of a, an outline for it, standard ones. Let's put in there. Uh, I play Succession DK, so um, if you're awakening, you probably are shoving more human damage, but whom's are kind of important to not get dead when you're trading. Um, and obviously, different classes have different needs. Evasion builds are going to have different needs, but just kind of give you an idea of things you can do. We can see I run two Corrupted here alongside two Red Spirit Crystals, right? These used to be offhand only crystals. That's no longer an issue uh, here. Uh, do still have special attack evasions. Um, on the slot for whom's on there just the two the two alicus you could i could see some people making an argument for also running the two alcrads for the attack speed it does benefit you a bit more accuracy as well if you can work those in there um, you could potentially you know drop these guys if you wanted to maybe get the attack speed personally on this setup uh wanted to go with the the red spirits on there of course l cars are going to be pretty much a necessity on here um, i can see a lot of builds running the two alicus and then uh maybe rather than these you're running specific ignore resistance um potentially something like ignore float on a dk or whatever depending on your class that's all going to be modified based on what you want to run the pvp stuff you're going to see there's no real best in slot it's going to be very variable to what gear setup you're running um you know, are you evasion? Are you DR? Uh, who are your opponents fighting? What type of PVP are you going into uh, for building your crystals? Uh, um, you know, are you doing 1v1s? Are you doing large scale? You might vary there. What's your opponent got? How much accuracy are you going to want there? That sort of thing. It's going to be highly variable for that. There's not going to be an end all be all. Kind of this, somewhat the same in PVE. There's definitely some options that are just like strictly best. Um, like I'll argue until I'm blue in the face, the attack speed options are rebellious alongside corrupted is going to be incredibly strong. And then uh, the most important thing is uh, checking out your class, making sure you have enough accuracy to hit, and then you can add additional AP there. No, no sense in a superseding an AP cap once you have enough AP. So whatever's going to work. So there you go, kind of an overview of uh, how to work the crystal presets. You can play around with that. I've got links to the AP caps and also the patch notes from today. So it has, it tells you specifically what crystals you can apply in there. It'll, it'll show you if you go to change them, right? Like if I take a Jin Viper off and then you can see I can add any of these. I already have two L cars in. <coughs> so you'll notice I cannot put a third L car. So you can just play with it that way if you wanted to and you'll get a feel for it. Um, just kind of trial and error. Uh, if you if you don't want to look through the chart so so there you have it for a new crystal ui overview if you did enjoy the video be sure to like it if you're new to the channel be sure to subscribe so you get notifications when new videos do go live and if you'd like to catch me playing live the link to my twitch page in the description down below jump on over there drop a follow so you get notifications for that as well with that said that's going to be it for this one want to thank everybody for watching and i will see you next time